Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So now we're going to continue with the uh, the third topics in EPO 640 electrical drive, which is the AC drive. Look, okay, the AC drive. So as we all know, AC drive is a uh, is a motor that is been driven by the AC supply voltage, right? So um, uh, we have a, a, quite a few number of uh, AC machines and what we're going to focus here is the, um, to start with the induction machine. Okay, so induction machine is a machine that runs uh, slightly lower than the synchronous speed. We have induction machine or also known as a synchronous machine. Why it is asynchronous? Because the speed of the rotor, the speed of the motor is always slightly below than the synchronous speed. What is a synchronous speed? And as the synchronous speed is this, the, the speed of the rotating magnetic field, uh, which is resulted, which is uh, produced by the supply uh, uh, from the stator side, there is a rotating magnetic field in the air gap it is known as a synchronous speed and induction machine always operate with the speed of the rotor slightly lower than the synchronous speed so uh, that's why uh, we have this slip uh, speed is it slip rpm slip rpm uh, slip speed so uh, this is actually to reflect the actual uh, physical operation of the induction machine whereby there is always a slip if you can think of about uh, of a two uh, surface, okay, a two surface, and when you um, turn the one of the surface, right? So it is always when you have a rough surface on that particular. If you talk about this, a disc, two discs, and then one uh, you put it together, and then you rotate one of the disc, D I S C and you have a rough speed to the other uh, disc which is attached with it it always slightly turn slightly lower than the one that the primary move that you have uh, done okay so that is why we have the slips rpm slips uh, uh, the term slip up from so ac drive so why not uh if these machines do such an outstanding job why do we also use an AC machine. Why we need these AC machines? So, of course, uh, one of the reasons, the, the, the main reason is because the, the available uh, supply AC uh, voltage is in terms of AC voltage. Is that it? So that's the main, uh, uh, main purpose of using AC machine. And now we look at the several reasons why AC machine is better or over the DC machine. So there are several reasons. One is AC machines have no commutators and brushes. Consequently, they require less maintenance. Uh, uh, compared to the DC machines, there is a uh, there is a DC uh, there is a carbon brush. There is a brushes. So that brushes actually will uh, worn worn out yeah? house worn out uh, for perhaps some time. So it needs to be replaced. So that actually cause uh, as a as a number two points out, AC machines cost less because we have to uh, maintain the the DC machines by replacing the brushes, you know, uh, cleaning, uh, maintenance. So that uh, will cost a lot, uh, a lot. So number two, AC machines cost less, way less, slightly. Uh, 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 lighter than the DC machine. So DC machine is uh, slightly uh, uh, heavier compared to AC machine. AC machines are more rugged and more better in hostile environment. AC machines can operate at much higher voltages up to 25 kV. DC machines are only limited to about 1000 volt compared to AC we have 25 kV. So uh, large uh, a more uh, 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 call it, uh, 
application can be used for the AC machine. AC machines can run at speeds up to 100,000 RPM compared to the DC machine which is limited to only 2,000 RPM. So one of the most common electrical motor used in most applications which is known as induction machine. So I, I, I read somewhere uh, it is about 70% of the industrial motor will actually come from the AC motor or the induction motor. This motor, motor is also called as a synchronous a synchronous motor because it runs at a speed less than its synchronous speed. Synchronous speed is the speed of rotation when magnetic field in a rotary machine. Uh, and it depends upon the frequency and number poles of the machine. So just a quick uh, I've given to you the the slide for the electrical machines before. I hope you have read that. Okay, synchronous speed, speed of rotation, it's a quick um, look into what is the synchronous speed we have, and S equals to 120F over P, so P here is the number of poles. So some of the books give the pole pair, the pole pair, but if you use this equation, that means it is number of poles. So P is number of poles, F is the frequency. So if you want to get a synchronous speed, it is 120 F over P. Okay. And induction motor always runs a speed less than its speed because the rotating magnetic field which is produced in the stator will generate flux in the rotor, which will make the rotor to rotate. But due to the lagging of flux current in the rotor, with flux current in the stator, the rotor will never reach to its rotating magnetic field speed, such as the synchronous speed. So that's the reason why the rotation of the induction machine always run slightly low, uh, run slightly uh, lower speed than the synchronous speed. The induction machine can operate both as motor and generator, but this machine is extensively used as a motor in many applications rather than the uh, generator. Uh, again, factors associated with the selection and rating of the optimum electric motor and AC converter for variable speed drive application. So, uh, normally we term it as a VST. So, if you uh, do some research in the AC conversion, we also always talk about the VST application. So, this is why we need a variable speed drive. So, this EPO640, we look into first, we're going to look at what is the uh, parameters that control uh, the speed, how to control the speed, and then we're going to look at the modeling, and we're going to look at the control aspect of the AC drive. So we start with the, the first part, which is how uh, we're going to get the equation, we're going to look at uh, what is the available control technique, uh, then the second part will be the control uh, system, the closed loop system of the whole drive so that you can vary the speed. So, factors associated with selection rating of the optimum electric motor and AC converter for variable speed drive. First is the nature of the application. So, we have to look at the application, the nature of the applications, right? Uh, maximum torque and power requirements and how this change with speed. So, we have to look into the torque that is going to be used, the power requirements and what is the speed frequent uh, the speed uh, uh, the limit of the speed we have to look at that the targeted speed uh, starting torque requirements so some of the uh, uh, applications need a high torque okay uh, so when we deal with the uh, load which is a uh, which is high so you need also have to have a dash machine that can start with the high static requirements the speed range, minimum and maximum speed, number five, acceleration and deceleration requirements. Do you have a, uh, how, how quick that you need to, the motor to, uh, to, to get from one speed to another speed? 
So we have to look at the, the rate of change, how fast is it. So this is a requirement. Compatibility with the main supply voltage, so you have to look at the frequency of the main supply. Is it 60 hertz? Is it 50 hertz? Is it run in the aircraft? So if you run into the aircraft, so you have about 400 hertz uh, frequency. I heard. Uh, number six, number seven, environmental conditions where the converter and motor are required to operate at ambient temperature, altitude, humidity, water, chemicals, and dust, etc. Ventilation and cooling for the converter and motor direction. Is it going to be unidirection or bidirectional? So your motor, the rotor can rotate in both directions. So we have to look at that. Accuracy of the speed control, do you uh, really want that accuracy or you just uh, don't care about the accuracy of the speed? So there's some application that requires a very precise uh, uh, speed to be run. Some may not uh, really look into that uh, accuracy, so it depends. Dynamic response, this is very much similar to the acceleration and deceleration requirement. Right? Dynamic response, so if you have a, some uh, torque, uh, which means that you put in uh, more torque, then is it going to, uh, how fast your motor can respond to that particular change in the torque or speed requirement. So dynamic response. And then speed regulation requirements with changes in load, temperature, supply voltage. So if there is a change in the supply voltage, the temperature, the load, so what is the control? How, what is the mechanism? How the speed can be controlled? So the duty cycle, including number of starts and stops per hour. Uh, this is uh, regarding the operation of the motor. And finally, uh, no, it's not finally yet. Overall power factor of the drive system and impacts in its effect on the main supply. So you have to look into the uh, the requirement by the the, the the for example the TNB. Eh? So it gives you some power factor that you need to look at. So you have to look into this. EMI and harmonics in the main power supply in the motor and motor cable. Uh, that also needs to be addressed. Uh, EMI filters required. So if there is a, uh, if the converter <coughs> produce a high EMI, electric, uh, electromagnetic interference, EMI is electromagnetic interference. So some of the converter which uh, work very high frequency switch at a high frequency, it will affect, it will actually generate an EMI. And sometimes also generate the harmonics. Uh, this um, actually, uh, so we need to look at uh, some of the limit, the standards that you need to comply with, and do we have or are we uh, EMI filters required? So you have to look at that. Earthing, shielding, and surge protection requirements, top pulsation in the rotor shaft, control method is it going to be manual, automatic? Is it going to involve analog or digital? And is there any communications that you need to do with the machines? Number uh, 20, control and communication interfaces required for the plant control system, indications required, reliability requirements, protection features, power and control cable requirements, parameter settings, local or remote programming, maintenance fares, and cost of alternative system, noise due to the harmonics, and finding mechanical resonance at certain motor speed. So this is the factors that we need to address. Uh, and also that will, uh, will determine the selection and rating of the, uh, your AC motor. Alright, some of the symbols um, that can that will be used in the uh, notes. Uh, okay, but by the way, uh, most of the notes here come from Sharkawi's book. Uh, quite lucky we have this uh, Sharkawi, I think I've shared with you. Uh, it will be on page uh, chapter 7. Okay, so you can refer to Sharkawi's book, chapter 7, which is controlling. Let me have a look. Okay, so it's best that we refer to one or two um, um, 
books that uh, you can uh, follow the term so we start with the Sharkawi when we talk about the control later on we to use the uh, Rashid uh, Harun Rashid so remember refer to chapter 7 speed control of induction machines <coughs> right ok so we come back to the uh, notes so we have ER, EM and the rest here ok next uh, ok so circuit model of induction machine I hope you have looked into the notes I've given to you previous uh, in the first class if I have put it to this slide from the electrical machines in part 4 is it? Okay. so that this is uh, the notes came from <coughs> it's my notes it's a long time ago Right, so we have looked into this uh, uh, equivalent circuit. Right, equivalent circuits. There you are. Right, so this is. Uh, I hope you have, everybody is uh, very familiar with this uh, equivalent circuit per phase. Yeah, we always analyze the induction machine, three phase induction machines, uh, using the per phase, single phase equivalent circuit. So we have R1, X1, Z. This is a core resistance and this is the magnetizing inductance and then we have the roto uh, inductance and uh, resistance here that is transferred to the uh, roto uh, the stator side so that's why we have prime here okay Oops. okay and okay. i hope you have looked into the notes to refresh so refer to the approximate equivalent circuit uh, so if you talk about the roto circuit this is in the if you look at the roto equivalent circuit and then we have SER okay then you have SXR and then you have RR okay S is the slip this is the slip and then you divide by S here so if you, you want to remove the S so that you want to operate with the same frequency F1 then you divide by S and now you have your circuits here on the consist of ER here are some of the good E2 this is E1 the E1 Step aside, then we have D2 on the roto side, and now change to JXR, and we have RR over S, and therefore this circuit also runs with the speed of F1. Okay. So if you talk about this, this is F2. You start with the F2, and if you have that uh, S, now this is actually. Omega L R and if you look at into Omega this is actually 2 pi F1 okay so that was, that's why you have S X R and therefore you operate with the speed of uh, with the frequency of F1 instead of F2 so if you want to combine then that's why there is a S X R here So finally, this is a, a common equivalent circuit that we have. We, com uh, we combine finally with the equivalent circuit. We combine and bring all the roto circuit parameter here to the, the to the stator side, and therefore you have this prime grid. And that current is also known as I two prime grid or I R prime, if you like. So here we have I S. I hope everybody is this is not your first time looking at the equivalent circuit. Right? So we are going to deal with this equivalent circuit uh, all the way. Right. So next, the speed of rotation of the field is called the synchronous speed, which is the 
dibuat by omega s 2 multiplied by omega dibuat by p then and you can further look at the detail why we have that omega 2 omega over p so omega s 2 pi uh, over 60 multiplied by and s great 2 pi over 60 so you change the rpm so this is in terms of rpm Then you change to this is in terms of radian per second. So if you want to change from RPM to radian, so you have to multiply by 2 pi over 60. And if you manipulate that, so you have 2 pi over 60, and S is known uh, as 120F divided by P. So if you look carefully, you can uh, 2 pi, so you, have, you cancel that. So to there, so you come to 2 to 5 f, that's why we have that. Omega s equals to 2 multiplied by omega divided by p. Right, so where p is the number of holes and omega is the supply frequency in radians per second. Okay, so uh, very much uh, the first parameter that we need to understand. No, this is the current speed and the slip is actually the ratio of the slip speed so this is actually the slip rpm if you have omega s minus omega m this is slip rpm so slip is actually the ratio of slip rpm divided by the synchronous speed so which gives the motor speed as so you can calculate omega m to omega s or if in terms of n you can also have n e m equals to n s one minus s right <coughs> so then the rotor current is given by so this is in terms of the basic equation and then we refer to divide everything with s so that's why we have i r for the Roto, for the rotor side, we have the R, then we have the XR, now we have R, so we have R divided by S. Okay, and where R, R, and XR, it is a are uh, referred to the roto widely. <coughs> so just uh, some refraction. Gap power. So PG is the air gap power. If I can draw the. So we start with P in. Is it it? The, uh, the power from the supply. And then we have the first. Loss, which is due to P core loss. Okay. Then you have also P copper loss on stator. Oh, I just put one here. Copper loss per stator. Then we have this P A gap. So if you uh, P in minus loss, copper loss, step on the stator, call loss on the stator, you have the P A gap, and then there's also a loss here after you cross to the rotor side, you're going to have P uh, call loss for 2, so this is 1, then you also have P copper loss for rotor side, then you have P develop or P mechanical here, okay. and finally you also have the final loss which is due to the winding of friction. So you have P rotational, P rotational, P winding, uh, and you have also P rotational here due to the rotation of the rotor. That's the 
loss from winding and, uh, and also from the friction okay. P rod and finally we have this P out or P sharp so this is the power that reach the, uh, the shaft uh, of the rotor side so uh, so therefore the developed torque the PG, PAG or PG here right. so uh, if you refer back to your uh, the equivalent circuit P a gap is defined by I hope this is, this is uh, you don't see this as a uh, an alien <laughs> This is not the first time you see this theory. P air gap is always 3 multiplied by I square R, R, R uh, the roto resistance divided by S. That uh, gives the equation for the P air gap. And then we have this developed top. So top, uh, we start with P equals to omega top. And therefore we have T divided equals to PD, which is this P here. divided by omega n, the speed of the motor and that gives you this uh, equation here whereby P developed P developed here is actually uh, 1 minus S of P gap P A gap or you can use this ratio and we have P gap P copper 2 the copper loss in the red rotor then you have the develop or P mechanical, sometimes PP, sometimes it is P mac, develop top. And the ratio of the three can be written as one, S1 minus S. So you have if you want to make a ratio between PG and PT, therefore on the right side you have one and one minus S3. Okay, so what does it mean is you can have PG over PT equals to 1, 1 minus S. Okay. And therefore, your, your PT, P developed equals to P A cap multiplied by 1 minus S. And that's why you put here. And then you also know that omega M equals to omega S. And finally, you have this equation. So, develop top equals to the A cap power P G divided by the synchronous speed. Okay. So this is the basic question. And, uh, and also we have these two uh, circuits. Uh, equivalent circuit. When we analyze the circuit, there are two techniques. First, you can do you can use the approximate per phase equivalent circuit whereby uh, you start you always start with the, uh, this is the original equivalent circuit is always to look like this. Then you can remove the RC for some reason. You can remove the RC, and what left is only XM here. JXM, JXS, this is JXR prime, this R, R of S. Okay, so uh, to do the approximate. To use the pro or phase of the circuit, we consider that I am here is very, very small. Yeah? Very, very small. And that's why you can actually neglect that and you can move this to the front. And you can move this branch to the front, and that's why you have this equivalent circuit. This is known as approximate per phase of circuit. Uh, in which actually we for induction machine uh, it is hard to do that approximation because I am is not really small okay but uh, for the analysis we sometimes we may use the approximate to simplify the explanation to simplify the analysis we sometimes use this approximate appropriate reverse circuit for I am normally this is done or used for Transformer, right? Transformer. Okay. So next, the RMS rotor current. So this is the RMS rotor current. 
I prime R uh, equals to Vs divided by <coughs> the, the magnitude. This is the magnitude. We just look at the magnitude of the proto current Vs divided by Rs plus R, R, R over S squared plus S plus XR prime R squared, the square root, so you get the magnitude. Okay. And then finally, the developed torque can be determined from. So this is the very famous equation. Is it T D or T mag equals to certainly uh, right in terms of V S squared. This is phase quantity. Eh? This is V phase. The yeah? phase quantity, single phase. Then you have. R prime R divided by S, and then you have Omega, and then therefore you have R S plus R prime R over S squared plus X S plus X prime R squared. So this is Fermi's equation. And that determines the characteristic of your induction machine. Okay. So, uh, 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 from this top equation, we have the characteristic. I'm not sure that this one. Okay, there you are. So, we have this top speed characteristic. Or if I can go back to the slide before, this one we use. From that speed, the uh, top speed equation, we have and this. And then I should show you. I hope you still remember we have this, just right here. The top speed characteristic is it? Go back to the previous equation. Okay, from this equation, we always draw the top against speed, see And for induction machines, we always have this. So, So this is when n equals to zero. Then here, at that point, we have n equals to an s, and therefore this is known as t start three. And here you have you can also put this as s equals to one. So if you have n equals to n s, s equals to 0, 3, because s equals to n s minus n divided by n s. So if n, n equals to n s, so this is equals to 0. So here you have s equals to 1, because n is 0, therefore you have n s equals to 1 at start. This is known as the starting torque whereby n equals to zero at start this is known as as t start here and then you can determine the maximum torque here the t max or sometimes because this is the pulling torque zero there's not a name for that uh, t so T max is the maximum top and at here you have S T max. This is better to use S T max. The slip at the maximum top. Okay. So here you have top equals to zero. And here you have top equals to zero. So there's no top at all during this point. <coughs> Right, 
and next, what do we have? So, and we also define, we have defined the region of operation. So, this is motoring region. Here you have generation or generating. Here you have plugging where your motor run in the opposite direction, okay? The negative end. So this is known as plugging region here. Okay, I hope this is uh, obvious in your, in your mind. This eh? uh, family, you are really familiar with this. Uh, the only thing is in the Sharkawi's book. Uh, instead of plotting T again N, um, it shows omega or the speed again again stop. Mm -hmm. So no worries. So if you remember this, then you can uh, understand uh, the graph or the characteristic drawn in the Sharkawi's book. Okay, Sharkawi's use this. No worries. Okay. So next, uh, so from that equation, just now, you can set S equals to 1, so you can find the starting torque, this is TS, and the slip for maximum torque, remember, the one I've shown you, the, uh, the slip at the maximum, okay, so this is ST max, just now I put it as ST max, but now it is as SM, okay, so SM, uh, how to get that? You differentiate the long equation just now and with respect to S, then you set to zero. Then you can, <coughs> you can find out that the equation uh, to find the slip at maximum torque is equal to this. Okay, the rotor resistance divided by RS squared plus SX plus X bar R to S square root. That gives you the slip at the maximum torque and if you replace back into the original equation, so if you replace this in the original uh, TD, that will give you the T max at the maximum top, which is TMM here. So if you replace that, then you, you get that uh, breakdown top. This is top. So you have breakdown top or pull out top or maximum top. Okay. So the equation becomes 3V squared, okay, this is supply phase voltage to omega S and this equation. And you can also do the ratio, the developed torque divided by the maximum torque, so that gives you this equation, right, next, and if you uh, compare with the starting torque, the ratio of the starting torque in the TM is given by the equation. The speed as function of torque, and if you manipulate the equation, finally you find out that this omega m can be defined by omega s 1 minus the maximum torque with the slip at the maximum torque relates with the T maximum and also the developed torque. So you can relate. All of the parameters here yes, to find omega m. And this is actually for the control requirements. So we need to look at how we can control the omega m. So what is the factor affects the omega m? So if you look here, this depends on the slip at maximum top, the maximum top, and the developed top. Okay. Next. Uh, just now, uh, I've shown you the approximate equivalent circuit today, but due to the, if you can read this, the cyclic current and leakage rate are high because the current here is very high. Normally, it's about thirty percent of the uh, I one. Okay, so you cannot simply neglect that. You cannot do the approximate. To do that, you cannot do that. So you have to maintain the magnetizing reactants in 
the branch and then you have to do the analysis so we have this Tavern equation. So next, so how to get the Tavern equivalent circuit? You have to look into from that side. You have to look at the circuit from that particular angle. Put your eyes here, right? Then you look into what is the voltage across that terminal because we're going to combine with here there. So this is the X. J X prime R, and you also have R prime R over S here. So you remove that, and then you look into that terminal from that terminal, and what is the, the voltage across this, and what is the the impedance, total impedance from that side. So if you how to do that, uh, for the terminal voltage, you just use the voltage divider rule. Right? For VTH, you use voltage divider rule. And from ZTH, you only actually need to short circuit the supply voltage. And then what you see is JXM is actually parallel to both RS plus JXS. Yeah, to get the, uh, the total impedance. So to get that ZTH, and solve that, then you can have RTH plus JXT. Yeah, and therefore, you can. Redraw the circuit of the stator side to give you VTH, RTH, and JXTH. And then combine with the uh, roto uh, parameter. And then you do this equivalent circuit. I triple E equivalent circuit. The terminal equivalent circuit. So from that figure, you can uh, again. Once you use the uh, tabernacle, now you have RTH instead of RS and XTH instead of RS. This is SM. Just now you have SM. Very so the same equation. And the Tmax now become Tmax 3VTH squared. K is just that one. Nothing, nothing new actually. So 3VTH squared over. 2 of the S and that gives you T max and this is T start, it's T start, starting top, so S to 1, so everything to change to RTH. Okay, so how to get RTH? You need to find that it is, but it is JXM in parallel with RS plus JXS. Just that. Okay, don't worry. Next. Power flow diagram or losses induction uh, motor. Induction motor can be described as a rotating transformer. Yeah, you can uh, actually, uh, uh, I mean, you, you can understand more on induction machine if you treat it as a rotating transformer. Secondary, uh, the roto, primary is the stator side. So if you have that in mind, then inshallah you can understand well the induction machine. Instead, the output will be mechanical. Okay, instead of a transformer, the output is uh, electrical. But for the induction machines, the output is in terms of mechanical output. Right. So you have this. I have drawn this before. So you have input power, three V in or V S I S cos theta here. And then you have the core loss. Okay. And you actually you can combine the V core one, V core two, right? lump sum into one PC here. Don't worry. So you have PC, and then you have stator copper loss that gives you the PA cap. Just now the equation is P, uh, the that is PG. Now it puts a PAG. And sometimes of some books, roto not rest in peace is a roto input power right and then you minus the loss for roto copper loss that give you the p develop just now you have pd here sometimes it's put as a pm p converter p mechanical right oh this is this is the developed top or the mechanical top or converted top 
and you minus with the rotational loss rotational rotation rotation rotational loss which is due to wind dash the wind and the friction okay and therefore finally we have e out or b sharp here okay so this is a uh, uh, the basic power uh, flow diagram of the machine. Okay, now we're going to look into the speed control of induction motor. Okay, speed control of induction motor. So once we have that, uh, uh, the Top speed characteristic. We know the equation for the developed top. Now we can to look at how we can control the speed control. So we now we have to look into the open loop control. There's a, forget about the control, the closed loop operation. We just focus and looking at uh, how can we uh, what is the parameter that affect the speed so that we can uh, uh, and we can plan or we can know. We can understand, we can uh, determine which parameter, if we change the parameter, the speed can be controlled. So this will be used, this information will be used for the closed loop or automatic uh, operation of the motor. Okay? So speed control of the natural motor. The basic relationship for speed top characteristic of an induction motor is given by equation below. This is very famous equation again and again. PD over omega. This is the omega m, right? PD over omega m, not omega s, omega m. And if you uh, change, I mean the the log equations equals to v two over r prime two. Now look at that. And so you now the equation turns to two instead of r. Just now we have r. Now we have two. So I hope that doesn't confuse you. Uh, V is the, if you look further, in here, V is actually the line-to-line -line quantity instead of phase quantity. Remember, we have uh, 3 multiplied by V phase to get, uh, sorry, we have that uh, equivalent, which is V line-to-line -line is always root 3 V phase, isn't it? Okay, so here, if you look at that, that as you, if, you talk, if you treat that as a V phase, then you have, must have 3 V phase squared R prime 2 divided by S omega S and the rest, yeah, right here, so that if you divide the total, V phase. So here you can actually do V to 3 V phase 0 square R prime 2 divided by S omega S and the rest. And here, here that actually. V line to line squared zero right. So you have to be careful with the equation in the notes. Sometimes it's represented as a uh, V phase, sometimes it's represented by the line to line. So here it is line to line quantity. Okay, so line to line quantity there. Don't worry. Okay, so from this uh, equation, from this um, Equations there we have developed top equals to PD and all the equation there. Therefore, by looking back, we can actually control the speed on the top by first is armature or rotor resistance, which is R2 here, 
how much you allow to inductance, you can choose that. And then it's actually x1 plus x prime 2 here. So if you control the roto inductance, you can control that, then you can control the speed. Magnitude of terminal voltage, which is the VMV line here, and as well as the speed. Uh, the synchro, uh, sorry, frequency of the terminal state, which is come from omega x here, isn't it? Because this is 2 pi, um, 2 pi uh, omega s is 2 pi f. S equals to 120F over P grid and omega S is 2560 multiplied by an S and therefore if you change frequency, the supply frequency you also change omega S. So that is the four main uh, parameter where in which when you change the parameter you change this four parameter you change the top as well as the speed okay and we also have this another four uh, technique to change the speed which is roto voltage injection because the roto side if you can access you can uh, you can uh, uh, you can touch or you can have an access access eh? To the rotor side, you can add first is the rotor resistor lettering, or you can have a voltage injection into the rotor side so that you can control the speed of the motor, and then you have the slip energy recovery, voltage frequency control, voltage. So we're going to look at this, all of this in this uh, if it was exposure uh, for syllabus in our syllabus okay so now start with the controlling speed using roto resistance okay? so we sometimes we can do some estimation or approximation the long equation which is tt so look at that now v is the line to line quantity as i mentioned just now okay? so tt if i can write again tt equals to v squared r prime 2 over s divided by s omega s I'm oh, sorry yeah for the s there so sorry omega s multiplied by r1 plus r prime 2s squared plus x1 plus x prime 2 squared so this is a long equation so if you consider that at steady state your s is very very small s is very small okay so because of that s is small you can say that this is S is small, you can make approximation whereby R1 plus R prime 2 over S here is very, very high or large compared to X1 plus X prime 2. Therefore, you can neglect this term, you can remove this term. And what else? You can also have R prime 2 S is a lot lot higher than r1 therefore you can also remove this you can also remove that and therefore what left is only this equation so you can remove that 
So what left is only that. You can remove this. S squared. So therefore, the final equation becomes TD equals to P squared multiplied by S divided by omega S R prime T. Okay, because of this approximation. Because of that approximation, uh, then you have this simple, simple equation here. And by looking at that equation, you find out that if the voltage temperature top are kept constant, if you keep that constant, the increase in R prime 2 results in an increase in the slip. So here, uh, as I mentioned earlier, now the Sharkov is this from Sharkov's book, page 191. So here, you can see that the top now, uh, uh, the, it draws top against speed. Okay. Uh, before this, we have always uh, top against speed here, great. And we draw like that. Okay. So now it moves from top here to the speed. Okay. okay. So this is this this is actually this start. This goes with that point. That point and this point goes to that point and this equals to that point. Yeah? So now it changes from there to there, then from that one to that point. Yeah? It is a um, different, uh, different uh, uh, plot. That. <coughs> so by adding r prime two, we see that now if you look at that, we start with r two here. This is a standard machine. As we add r prime, the rotor resistance into the rotor side, so we can see that now the torque here. I mean the speed slightly reduced. Okay, so this is the new. Okay, this is the new characteristic, this is the old characteristic. So if you can compare at lower top, at small top, you can see that there's no uh, it's not so significant change in the speed, is it? Right? So if you focus on that top, only on that top, it's very close from speed, the first original speed to the new speed, is it? Right? But as the top is increased. Okay, as thought because T2 now is a thought can increase. Now there is a slightly there is a difference between the speed, the previous speed and the new speed. Is it three and four here? But in terms of the top, the maximum top, we still have the same maximum top. So this is T max. Right? The addition of a resistance, the rotor resistance, change the speed of the motor, but doesn't change the T max. And what, we can, what else we can say that for lower or low load or low torque, there's no, it's quite a, a very small um, change in the speed, but as the torque is increased or the load, the, the load is then you can see some change, uh, some uh, difference between the new speed and the old speed. So, uh, so if you can read that, the increase in rotor resistance does not change the synchronous speed or the magnitude of the maximum torque. Yes, doesn't change T max as well as an S. No change, and also <coughs> sorry, there's no change of an S doesn't change the T max. <coughs> it only skews the characteristics so the maximum torque occurs at a lower speed. Right? Adding a resistance to the rotor circuit does not cause the motor speed to change by any appreciable value at light loading conditions, T1. 
the difference in speed between points one and two is rather small. Okay, so if you focus on that change, it's very small. Difference is very small. Although at heavy loading conditions at T2, at heavy loading, the motor speed may change by a wider range. Wider range. See, we have a wider, a wide, wider range from point three to point four. However, the speed range is still narrow, but still narrow. Uh, but it's still narrow. And therefore, it is not suitable option. Uh, disadvantages, not much margin speed, as I mentioned here. And it also increases the motor losses because you add more resistance. Okay, therefore, you have I squared. R remember, we have I squared R at here. So you have additional loss. <coughs> so next is we have this roto voltage injection. So um, roto voltage injections. So as I, uh, if you can access, if you can get hold of the resist, uh, roto resistor, okay, uh, roto side, you can. Instead of there is a short circuit here, normally you have a short circuit here, and this is R prime uh, 2 over S, and this is better. So this normally the circuit is short circuit here, here. But instead of that, we inject a voltage here, voltage supply to the resist to the rotor side, <coughs> so that you can control the speed of the motor, and uh, you can refer to Sharkawi's book, okay? Refer to Sharkawi's uh, book. There's a long equation how you can get into that particular top equation there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, finally, you have this equation of speed clock characteristic by the injection. So, this is the injected supply as uh, uh, voltage or, uh, or the rotor voltage injection supply, eh? uh, supply voltage, VI, I have the VI here, VI I there, so by uh, controlling the voltage injection, you can change the top or you can change the speed of the motor. So when you go further, if you analyze further, uh, you can see that if you have, so now we have V, I3 is higher than VI2 and then with VI2 is higher than VI1 so therefore what we can write okay so this is VI3 is higher than VI2 and also higher than VI1 3 uh, so we have that and therefore uh, so when you plot this and you change the VI here, uh, sorry, change VI here, so you can see that these characteristics appear here. Whereby, if you look at further, this is VI three is the highest three, so it's best that you look into the highest. Three. So if you increase the voltage injection, you can see that the speed now. It, it actually changed the the top starting top it also changed the t max it also changed the change everything change a lot isn't it change the st max and it also changed the synchronous speed here uh, S. Hmm? Uh, no. uh, go for that. So adding that tensile motor is an unrealistic option for the following reason. The physical size of the inductance required to make a sizable change in speed is likely to be larger than the motor itself.
Okay, uh, adding another statement is unrealistic option for the following reason. First one, the physical size of the inductance required to make a sizable change in speed is likely to be larger than the motor itself. Yeah, the induct. Oh, this is another technique. Sorry. If I can go back to the. Wait. If I can go back to the auto injected voltage, so you can see uh, uh, change a lot, is it? it? And you can uh, read from the Sharkovitz book. First, you change the NS here. Hmm? The synchronous speed is changed. And then change the T max. Okay. And you should change the T start here. Okay. So, you need to consider that uh, if you want to use the uh, voltage injection. And finally, for this week, I'm going to stop at this uh, this controlling speed using inductance. So this is another technique whereby you can control the speed by controlling the inductance of the roto roto inductance. However, adding inductance to the motor winding is an unrealistic option, so you will not be discussed. Option for the reason the physical size of the inductance required to make a sizable change the speed is likely to be larger than the motor itself. So if you want to change the speed, uh, you need a very large inductance and larger than the motor itself. So it's not realistic. Unlike variable resistance, variable inductance requires an expensive and elaborate design. So you have to really. Um, look into the how you can uh, going to design the inductor uh, to be to be attached to the resistor so when you design the inductor you have to consider the current the winding the, uh, you know, the, the, the flux okay you need to look at the saturations of the inductance of the inductor uh, many elaborate design number three the insertion of inductance reduces the starting torque Right, so it actually you want some advantage, but then you have a problem with the starting torque. The insertion of inductance consumes reactive power that further lowers the already low power factor relation. Okay, so it's not unrealistic. This is, it is an unrealistic option, and therefore it's not uh, normally you don't use the uh, and never use this control speed using inductance. But we know that by changing inductance. Theoretically, on paper, theoretically, yes, you can change the speed by using inductance, but it is not um, it, it is not practical, it is unfair. Okay, uh, so that covers our uh, lecture for this week, right? Uh, uh, next week, we're going to look at two, another two or three techniques to control the speed, and then we're going to look at the close loop. The modeling, the close loop of the machines uh, for the rest of the easy drive. Okay, thank you so much.